Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. Today, my husband has dragged me out of the house. He did a little bit of organization in his school classroom before the new school year starts. And while we're already up here in Springfield, Missouri, we thought we would stop in one of my favorite thrift stores. This one is a tad more ex like on the expensive side. So I very often leave with absolutely nothing from this thrift store. So we will see if there's anything that tempts me or if I just walk out with nothing. But in any case, you will get to see some of the things that I would typically pick out if I was going to purchase them. And we'll see if there are a reasonable price. So let's get to thrifting. just for the hardware on it. Why is it ten dollars? What do you think this is?
Oh my goodness, guys. <clears throat> so here I am telling you that I don't find stuff at thrift stores all the time and I never find the good stuff. And I go to a thrift store and I find like all the good stuff. I could have literally spent a small fortune in the two thrift stores that I went to today. And I had to be select, very select. I had to be intentional about what I was bringing home. I, I often put things in my cart and then I walk around the store with them and then I think about them really hard and I ask myself some questions like, do I really need this? And if the answer is no to the questions, I ask myself, do I really need this? Do I have a home for it? Does it have a purpose in my home? And then I will also ask myself, do I see myself actually using it in the next year? If the answer is no to any of those questions, I will reluctantly put it back, especially if, I mean, I can even really love the item too. But if I answer no to those questions, then I need to, I know that I need to put it back because it's not a smart decision and I'm trying to make good decisions. Every now and then, don't make such great decisions, but we're trying to get better. So anyway, so I found a couple of goodies and I wanted to go ahead and quickly show them to you as quick as I possibly can. There are a couple of these things that I bought strictly because they were the coolest things I had ever seen. Never seen anything like that. In fact, I've seen, I saw several of those things today. And I was like, well, I have no idea what this is. I am intrigued. So I will often take a photo of that item and then I will quickly do a Google lens search to see what else people are saying about items that look similar to that or that specific item on the web. So I do that a lot of times with a couple of the things and I did do that with several of the things that you saw in this video. Some of them I brought home and some of them I left. So one of the first things that I wanna to show to you is this really cool thing. I, you probably won't know what it is and I didn't know what it was at right away. It is this, it was $7. And it's this little leather case. Take the lid off. Still confused as to what it is, I'm sure, because I was. This comes out. It is a silver collapsible cup, guys, with its own leather case. Like, is that not the coolest thing you've ever seen? I mean, the handle is even fancy and it snaps into place right there. And it goes in for storage. Coolest thing I've ever seen. I had to bring it home, especially for only $7. I don't think they knew what it was, honestly. It was just sitting on the shelf and I'm not sure that people understood what it was, but I was happy to take advantage of that. The next thing that I got, I actually have another one exactly like this. And it's a little jar that has holes at the top, almost like a sugar shaker, or um, I wouldn't say a salt shaker because it's really big, but maybe a salt shaker. You could use it for all kinds of things. You can even use it for baking soda or borax if you have an ant problem, which I do, or even diatomaceous earth in your garden. So this will have lots of uses. It was $3 and I didn't feel like that was too much to ask for it. I see things like this for a lot more than that and I actually wanted more. I have, an, I have one and so now I have two. Another thing I bought and this was a huge splurge. Again, I splurged. I put several things back so that I could buy these because I wanted them so badly. Another set of brass bookends and they are German Shepherd dogs. They were $25, so not much more, about $3 more than the other pair that I bought recently. Um, but they are solid brass, once again. And my son, my seven-year-old, loves German Shepherds. And it is his greatest wish that when we are able to buy property that he can get his own German Shepherd puppy. And he is also a really good affluent reader, so these will go in his desk. So cool. I'm trying to pick up intentional pieces to build their rooms with. I don't want just junk. I know that they're children, but I want them to have a very curated bedroom. When I think of a children's bedroom, like the iconic, perfect children's bedroom, I think of Christopher Robin from Winnie the Pooh. You know, the classic Winnie the Pooh movie when they open up the scene, the whole scene to his bedroom, yeah. and he just has all of these neat little things sitting around everywhere and it's such a, um, it feeds the imagination for children to have unique and interesting items that speak to their personalities throughout their bedroom. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to slowly 
curate a couple of really good high quality pieces for their bedrooms that they can take with them into adulthood. I am sad to say, but at the same time, I, I understand that it, it is benefiting me, but I feel like there was a theme in the thrift stores and the theme was vintage goodness because there were so many items there that were just in such good condition that were very like vintage, like 1950s, 1960s at the latest items. There were a couple of vintage crocodile hand bags that were from the 1950s and I should have snagged them. They would have been about $13 a piece and I'm kicking myself that I did not buy them because they were in such good condition and they actually resale for 90 to $120 because they are, they were in perfect condition. Like they'd been sitting in somebody's closet for years and hadn't been used. And actually several of the items that I got and that I saw today were exactly like that. And one of them is this vintage throw. Not sure that you can see it. It is so pretty and it has this these tassels on the sides or the edges. And it definitely has a musty smell. So it's been sitting probably on some elderly lady's guest bedroom, um, probably for decades. And it is immaculate. It's called Morgan Jones Made in the USA. And when I Googled Morgan Jones, vintage was the word that came up over and over again. And it is a beautiful cream throw. And I got it for $12. So I am so grateful for the older generation that knew how to take care of their things and were good stewards of their stuff. Another thing that I bought is actually a set. I was looking for some little girly lamps and these come with lampshades, which it is very awkward at the moment because there are no light bulbs in them. So I'm just gonna take the shades off. There's the shade. Nothing particularly special, but it is a matching pair of little milk glass hobnail lights. Just like this. And it was $12 for the pair. It has brass and milk glass on them. So this is gonna look adorable in their bedroom. This item was one of the interesting things that I picked up and I had to Google what this was. You twist it and the little arms move at the top. And I actually Googled it and Google has said that this is a nut cruncher. So I guess you put nuts in this and you go like this, sort of like a pepper, I forget what those are called, pepper mill. So it's sort of like that. Another really cool thing that I have never seen and so I just, I had to have it. It was $10 and that's kind of a ridiculous purchase, but Maybe not. I mean, you never know. I might need some nuts crunched and this can do the job for me. Another item that I got for one of my daughters is this beautiful vintage lamp, uh, mirror. So it's a little brass mirror. Look how pretty that is. This was $6. Super pretty they will have fun using this to look at themselves. This might seem like a boring purchase, but it was a good deal and I've been looking for one. It is a vintage style dish rack and I have needed one for a while and this one was $5.99 and it still has its little things on it. So I doubt that it was even used, which is good for me again, so. I love that it's vintage style. I love that it's got the place for the cups on the side and it's a pretty good size. So it was a good steal. I'm pretty sure that these would be at least $20 in the store if I were to buy it new. Another fun thing that I bought for my oldest son is this. It is leather and you open it up and it's a leather checker mat. And over here on the side are the checker pieces, which have never been opened. I thought this was so cool. This was $7, real leather and suede. And it is a travel game. And he actually loves checkers and he likes to play chess as well. So I thought that was really cool. Definitely worth the $7 for sure. The last thing that I got, actually there's a couple more things, but one of the last things that I got were some vintage books. I actually am collecting these vintage books about the states. They have pictures by Kurt Weiss, 
and I actually collect him as an illustrator, but I also collect these books and they are beautifully illustrated and go into the history of each state. And you wouldn't believe how difficult these are to come by, honestly. Just beautiful illustrations. These were $4 a piece. And honestly, when I picked them up, I did not know that because they were just in the regular book section. When I got to the register, she showed me that it had price tags on the back. I was like, oh man, I didn't even know that. But again, I am collecting these specifically. And so I went ahead and paid the $4 a piece. I mean, if I were to buy them online, I would probably pay $4 a piece for them anyway with shipping and such. And then I got a Hardy Boys. This is actually for my niece. She is a big Winnie the Pooh fan. And I got her the Pooh storybook. And it's just got his, you know, little stories in it. Super cute. We play piano in this house. And we love, well, I say we, but it's really me. I play piano in this house. And I love old fashioned music. And I love historic music. And this is um, music in our town and music in our country. So it's got patriotic music as well as some cute little kids songs that they used to sing back in the day. Froggy a wooing would go. Again, adorable illustrations and something I will actually use. This is another one that was actually hard to come by. It was probably worth quite a bit. I collect this um, Childhood of Famous Americans series and this is Tecumseh. Shawnee Boy. So it is a biography made for the younger generation about historic figures, basically, from America. And this one is about Tecumseh. So I hope I'm saying that correctly. I have quite a few of these books, but I didn't, I don't think I have this one. And even if I did, it was $2 and you typically can't find them that cheap. So the last book I bought because it is beautiful and I am a sucker for animal illustrations. And this is absolutely full of them. Full page animal illustrations, just gorgeous. I seriously, I have purchased so many books with animal illustrations just because I love them. This one's cool. It says several of my son's very favorite animals in it. The bat, the armadillo, and the kangaroo rat. All right, I am definitely losing the light. There, that's a little bit better. And I am on to my last two items. I got this silver, I think it's a candle stand, but it is ornate silver and it even has those little feet on it. I don't know if you can see that, but just a beautiful ornate silver. I'm assuming it's for a candle. I could be wrong. If you know what this is for, let me know, but I love it and I'm pretty sure it is solid silver. And the last fun thing that I got are a couple of silver buckets. My kids love to play in dirt and sand and we have downsized our sand toys because they end up trashed in our backyard anyway. And these are stainless steel and they are the perfect size for my two-year-old and my five-year-old. These were $3.99 a piece and I went ahead and got both of them because I think that they are perfect for little kids to play with and they will not get destroyed. So it's a win in my book. All right, guys, I had so much fun thrifting today. I always love to just go, just to even look at stuff. Like even if I'm just going in there and I'm not actually purchasing things, I love to look at things, which is why it usually takes me so long to walk through them. <sighs> much to the chagrin of anybody waiting in the car for me. But if you love old things as much as I do, let me know in the comments because I know I'm not the only one that loves old stuff. And don't call it junk because it most definitely is not junk. They are all treasures and I treasure them. So even if I'm not bringing them home to my house, I love to look at them and appreciate them for their craftsmanship and the ideas that whoever created them had. I think it's wonderful. In any case, thank you so much friends for watching all the way through if you've made it this far. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you aren't and share it with any friends you think would enjoy this content. I appreciate all I appreciate you all so much. I really love that you are here to support me and here to join this community at Capturing Wonderland. And I can't wait to talk to you again. So thanks so much, guys. 
God bless.